All right, everyone, welcome back to Champions of the Fog. We are jumping right into the middle of things. We have Infinity, I'm sorry, Infinity versus Misery. And I am joined by none other than Guild Spire. How are you doing today? How are you avoiding the heat? That's what I want to know. Uh, it's called being in Minnesota, where it is already it so cooling down. So, you know, it's like low 60s right now, which is fine for right now until it's sub-Antarctic temperatures. That being said, you know what is heating up is this match right here, where we are going to be seeing Ducky, Misery's Killer, and looks like we're in chase with a Dwight. You know, after spending some time with Taco the other day, you might say that this is the Dwight call going after uh, this survivor. And I might, okay, I take that back. This is not the chase I think this nurse wanted. Also, nurse on ARP is a choice. I'm, ju I'm just gonna say it. I don't know many times we see this killer on this map. Yeah, definitely is a little bit rare to say the least. That being said, it is a mirror match, so both teams are on an even playing field between the two. And a decent double tap there on the ace as we are going to see this first down. Of course, running through all the perks that we know of so far and that the survivors know of so far. Corruption intervention, what was formerly Ruin, and a Thanatophobia. So, once again, I, I said it since round one. We're into round three. The nurse meta has changed a lot. Okay, I, I thought for a second something was wrong. They were just staring, but no, they're just, you know, they're content to hold this four gen. Yeah, now we're I seeing mean, Thanatophobia and Ruin? Yeah. What happened to Pop Goes the Weasel? What happened to Thrilling Tremors? Your guess is as good as mine. The data from this season is going to be really interesting, to say the least, <laughs> to see what S tiers are bringing as we change things from, you know, agitation being banned on S tiers. Maybe that was the catalyst to push them t away from Pop Goes the Weasel. Ruin has been an interesting choice that we've seen on a number of killers who are really just trying to go for that early tunnel out. Thus, you know, leaving Ruin up until the point where that first kill takes place. But looks like we are going to be seeing second stage come in here on the ace. Unless Survivor sprints in in the nick of time. Doesn't look like it's going to be the case. I, I, oh, I spoke too soon. They're trapped. No way. No way. Huh. Well, you know, I'll be honest. Did not know that was a thing. Uh, that could have been absolutely deadly, because, like, okay, I guess the question is, is there a rule against body blocking a survivor into a corner so they die to end game collapse? Realistically speaking, there isn't, at least as of right now, there isn't. Um, oh, man. I mean, theoretically speaking, they could have waited the 60 seconds for the person on hook, forced them onto death, uh, kept that person there, but it would have then sacrificed them probably another three gens. So, like, there's a give and a take there, theoretically speaking. That being said, Ace with a decisive strike coming in, but does not get them much, if any, distance as they will be put back up on the hook for the final time. So, worth noting, I think all that did was just inherently secure second stage because this survivor is now healed. Renato is now fully healed, picked up everything. Survivors have done two gens, but once again, there's a survivor out of the game for that. So I would say we're looking at a, I, this is a four gen, unless they got something crazy up their sleeve. I think it might be a 4K too, unless survivors have something really sneaky up their sleeve, because this looks pretty rough. I mean, it definitely does not look good for as far as that being said, they have two gens that they can work on pretty freely. The one in the middle and the one over by Shaq. So I think we're going to be seeing a third gen completed here in just mm -hmm. a few moments. I think as far as going to probably play it smart, play it safe. And we see some progress here and there, but not seen a lot of scratch marks. So these play survivors playing it very safe. They're calling out when the nurse is leaving from one gen to go to another. But we do see scratch marks here behind the hill. The question is, which survivor it might be? It's a very good question indeed. And my guess would be Renato. They, I would say, since they got the unhook, and it was a safe unhook, they would be the deli player. You sent that survivor back here. They also have probably sprint first, gets them back into safe zone if they do, or if they are able to get away. And obviously if you get, you know, two tap, then you still have Delhi to get out of that situation potentially and not have your team, you know, stranded with you hooked in the middle of the four gen. Oh, unless uh, Jake rotated in instead of Renato, uh, I might be entirely wrong. My theory might be complete trash. 
Yeah, but that being said, Nurse willing to go away from their forge and over towards Shaq's side for this chase, sensing that maybe these survivors being a little bit too sneaky for their own good as we do see a Nether Gen pop off. Looks like based on this direction, that is the Shaq Gen. Oh man, that if if Jake had actually ran straight there, that would have been a nightmare scenario for them. But luckily for the Jake, the, the nurse, a uh, very greedy blink is going to cost them that chase entirely. And going back to their gen situation, don't see anything on the hill. Did they sneak someone back here into the 12 is what I'm wondering now. I, I would imagine so. Yeah. Here this gen pretty well progressed. I mean, these stars, like I said, they're being very thought out, very methodical. Looks like they're actually going to force no the shot. gen completion and maybe a sprint first as well. Either that or an overcome, hard to say which, but either way is they get enough distance to not get two tap there. And this is the Renato, that I think you're right. I think it's the sprint first and they possibly even have Delhi. They did get a fourth gen done, which considering the scenario, that might be, honestly, that's impressive. But that means that the middle gen, this is the most split you can have the generators, I think. And they leave them slugged again. They're going back to the hill gen. They are, yeah, they can't hook. They know that's the deli player. Oh my goodness, that, uh, if this is not the deli player, by the way, this is like some of the best mind games I've ever seen from a survivor side. I mean, it's hard to say, right? We're thinking that it is, but based on the timing of that hit, it really could be either or, because I think Sprint First is really the telltale sign of Deliverance here. If that was Sprint First, then 1000% Renato has um, uh, Deliverance in hand, but if it is Overcome, then Gordon's? it might just be a uh, surprising mind game. And yes, sure enough, that is the final perk here for this killer. That is discordant, something that we also just do not see often, if ever. But that is a very scary discordance take. Hey, that hill gen you're working on? Yeah, there's two people on it. There's the deli we were expecting on the Renato. The other server has already gone into the middle. However, White has to be careful here. If they go down, that could be a bit of a disaster scenario. Lucky break, gonna get into distance. Wait, they're gonna rotate Renato. Renato's gonna go finish the gen. Yeah, they have to, they can't commit to that. Oh my goodness, this is so brutal. These survivors are playing so well. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, given the circumstances, looking at what these survivors have been able to do, they've been playing fantastically. Now, mind you, all three survivors currently injured. This is going to be a dry kick. The of this gen by 2.5%, fall by 0.3% per second thereafter. But Thanatophobia is going to be doing a lot of work here, slowing these mm -hmm. survivors down by 6% right now. 6% is pretty dang good, all things considered, and they will be able to watch these two gens start to regress. Okay, I might be wrong. The gen that got done might have not been the most ideal gen, but they still did try and chip into this three gen potentially, so that's really well done. And obviously, like, I would say 4K1 is a pretty standard scenario for Survivor, so being able to achieve that already uh, when the nurse had this much pressure in the beginning was a really good comeback. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, Nurse is right to be a little bit concerned about this gen. It's the only gen that they do not have line of sight on. I True. think what they need to do here is just send someone behind the main building there, have them sit on that gen, force the nurse to kind of go between hill and main. And if they're able to do that, I think they will secure victory here. And it really just comes down to these of ours being very patient, very methodical, and taking their time, taking time to reset, and not taking risky plays, as we do see them just leaving the nurse's territory this time and time again. We see scratch marks, wow. though, going over towards hill gen right now. That looks to be a Jake. Yep. Maybe setting up for a balanced landing. That would make the most sense, get some value, and they will get stuck there, and that will, yeah, that's gonna cost them a tag getting caught on that totem. However, second plate coming back, this might be a double tap. That might have been pretty damaging. There's the firecracker, not gonna get a blind, and they will get the tap through the rock here. Do they go for a hook? That's the question. Do they have the time to go for a hook? And yeah, Nurse kind of concerned here about the gen behind main. <laughs> No progress to be heard on it, as far as I can tell, and so they will leave it. No, there is. There's more progress. I did. Yeah, we hear footsteps too. That's oh, Renato. My word. These survivors have an incredible amount of pressure against this nurse. It is terrifying. And there is Renato growing into the distance. Oh, doubling back around the rock. Really well played. But now they can't come into this chase. They have to go back to the hill. I. Okay, they're they're resetting. It looks like so. This is, again, that's such a that's such a good move. Like that that is so methodical. It's like you don't have to pressure this gen. Renato's doing his job. They're not going to commit to a chase because they're scared. There's this Gordon's in center instead. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, so the question is, like do you go for the Renato or do you go for the Disco? We're gonna see Dwight take the hit and get some distance to boot. And they're just looking around for their potential down. But even if they get the down here, I don't think they can theoretically camp out the hook. I think they get the hook and that's it because then the survivors are gonna be back on the gens. And so this is a really big scenario, especially as the nurse is going to be committing to this chase, bringing them Shaq side. I think we're going to see Renato probably behind main right now, but they are going to be slowed down oh, no. by the Natophobia by 6%. Possibly, yeah, if I say you can't commit to this. I think this I think this nurse's only scenario where they can clutch this is they have to get a hit and another hit and slug two people and then pray, despite the fact that it's ARP, that you can find your slugs after that. Well, right now, what the nurse is hoping for is that Renato is on main generator. If in an instance the survivors have gotten greedy and Renato is back here, then that will so. be the keystone moment for this nurse. However, looks like they do not believe Renato's here, so looks like they might be resetting, in fact. Mm -hmm. As we did see a survivor over by this middle gen, I want to say the field white, and it's going to take some time to kick the gen 2.5% off that gen. Scratch marks over here by the truck, and it looks like this is the truck. Indeed. I would imagine the survivors... Okay, now I'd be scared. Okay, but I say, if I didn't see a heal soon, I'd be thinking they might be jamming the gen, but no, it looks like they are resetting, which, again, I think that's just the correct play on the survivor's part. If you have this many entries, just reset. What is the nurse going to do? The, the regression is not as much as when you both run back and double up on the gen for 10 seconds. Like, it, it this is a losing attrition battle unless the survivors make a mistake, I think. Yeah, and right now, these survivors have been doing a fantastic Man. job in chasing. There's the Discord Disco, the which means they, they healed, but now they're both on that gen. 4% slowdown oh, from Fanatophobia. Yeah. They might be able to get this done. If they get this done, there's going to be so many fresh outs, potentially, because we know all four perks. Predicting a blink around the corner, expected, but no, they just pop the gem. They don't care. Oh no, where are the exit gates? Are they on the side of the map? Renato's not the. Oh no. Yeah, we're looking at multiple fresh outs here potentially. Oh, and the exit gates are split. That is a nightmare scenario for the nurse. Survivors played this absolutely perfectly to a T. They didn't give this nurse an inch. Okay, they did. When Renato got, you know, body trapped, but. Still. Yeah, I mean, Rizzo speaking, that was the only thing that went against them, and this Renata just doing a fantastic job in chase, 316 the nurse there, and mm -hmm. looks like they're trying to make their way over to this Exegate, but we do not see any lights. Exegate getting open on the other side, that there is the Jake and the Dwight, and we will see mm -hmm. two going out, leaving the Renata to die, and so this is going to be a true 16, 2k, 12. yeah, 2k 6 hook. Honestly, fantastic job by these survivors. Yeah, that was incredible. And again, I, I, maybe a little bit of tilt from the nurse as well at the end of that chase, just because the pressure is getting under. Like, the survivors had so much pressure that entire game, despite losing a survivor in just such a crazy way so early on. That was very methodical. That was intense. Oh my goodness. Well played to these survivors. They that was That was more than what I thought they could have achieved on that map. That was really well done. All right, everyone, welcome back to trial number two of set number one of the Nurse Extravaganza. And I'm already seeing a little bit of uh, an interesting corrupt over here. I think, is this very similar to the 4 gen we just had? Except the 4 gen is no longer in middle. It's just all on the side. Yes, you would be correct. Very similar, but different enough to where this can play out differently. Just a little bit. Also, I don't think the yeah, there's there's no gen behind the main building, which is going to be really useful. For the Not that this person. Oh my goodness! Already doesn't have a, an achievable win con. What is up with these power hits? Did he, this happened last time. They hit the pallet stun, and it just it, it helps the nurse. Well, so the biggest thing is is that while they're fatiguing, they can't get stunned. So as long as you have begun the fatigue, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that is a very, very quick step. We do see that undetectable stuff. Is that believe really, that is bad man's last breath? Yes, that is in fact a bad man's last breath. The describe the blink attack grants the undetectable stats effect for 25 seconds. Pretty, pretty good. And oh no, this game might be over very, very quickly. We did see a thrilling charmers briefly, which is more akin to what I'm saying, and also a dying light. Yeah, there, there's a number of perks that have been revealed from, of course, Corrupt Intervention, Dying Light, Thrilling Tremors. The fourth perk's still a little bit of an unknown. 
That being said, the Nurse here in a fantastic position as they only need to get a 2k 7 hook in order to secure victory for Infinity. Absolutely, it looks like the edge trap is going to be a little bit of a bane. I spoke too soon, right as I said that they will go down. Second hook potentially incoming, barring a decisive strike. No decisive strike, they do get the reset on the ace and second hook incoming for the Felix. It is worth noting, because they have thrilling tremors, I can take a gander as to what that fourth perk is, but we'll wait. I'm curious. But Dying Light, this is what I was interested in. Dying Light is what we saw during last uh, season's finals. And yep, that is a Pop Goes Win, so we know the fourth perk. This is so yeah. interesting. With, with Aji being banned, I am loving the mix and matching of perks. It's been interesting. It's been really interesting to see what teams are now bringing for their S tiers. And this nurse has just been doing a fantastic job. Their blinks have just been on point back to back to back. And I think we're going to see another good one here. Ace making up that alpha will go down for it. I'm about to say, we're still at five generators. I I don't want to call it early, but this is not looking too hot for the Star Wars. They do get the hook in the meantime. However, this is third hook incoming. It's a fresh hook to boot. If they go around getting some fresh hooks, that's also a potential win condition as they need 12 points just to tie. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? The win condition is within reach, but looks like they're wanting to get the Felix out of this match as quickly as possible, getting a clean hit on them as well. Felix with nothing here, gonna try to double back, but Nurse gonna be right back on top of them, and looks like this will be Felix sent back to campfire via the Entity. Indeed, just some really clean blanks coming in from this Nurse. Felix not having a lot of room to work with. I'm surprised they didn't go for some more line of sight on the other side, but maybe they just didn't have a time to get to it. Ace caught out here, fatiguing out. There's the... Oh my god, this, this nurse is... This nurse is so dang precise. It's disgusting. They did pop one of the four gen, though, and blast my... Can someone finish it? Can someone in the area finish it? Nope. Yeah, it's going to be 30% off that gen. Ada coming in to harass the pickup on the ace, so ace currently underneath a pallet, and with the nurse missing their first blink strike there, it will give them some opportunity as nurse will have to walk back and pick up the ace. I imagine Ada going to be right in behind here. Nurse sensing that too, taking a look around, finding a Serena instead of a sprint first. With an, uh, probably an, uh, a deliverance in pocket too. Don't know who unhooked the Felix earlier, so they might have it. Worth noting, I've seen this a couple times now with the previous nurse and this nurse now. They've missed a couple of lunges that I think they're used to. And I think it's because we banned heavy panting. They're not used to not having that 30% extra lunge. You would be correct. We've seen it a few times. And yeah, that has been my suspicion as well. And uh, I think it's pretty likely that because they are so well practiced with having heavy panting available mm -hmm. to them, uh, them not having it now definitely throws them for a little bit of a loop. Just a bit. I mean, they still have fragile weeds, which is just disgusting as can be. Like having, essentially having built-in sloppy is already really good. So heavy panting, you know, making the chases a little bit more difficult for us. I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> Well, not to and, mention that, but, like, Nurse's numbers season to season have been slowly but surely dropping with how you've been should. tuning S-tiers. On, in addition to just the new tools that survivors have access to as well. So, Nurse right now is actually in the bottom of the top three. So, we have, I think it's Blight with the highest uh, kill rate, followed by Spirit, then Nurse, who is, like, right at, I want to say, like, 3.1, maybe right below at 2.9. So, Nurse definitely hurting as far as balancing is concerned and we do see Serena coming in for the Hanuk. As you said, very likely a deliverance in hand. Nurse going to get stunned this time around though and looks like they will be going for the ace and the tunnel out. Makes the most oh. sense. However, that ace actually has a lot of distance. They might have had a live play to get them to the distance and with that said, Serena will be taking the trade here. First though coming in, but like we said, Osley Adeli. Worth noting though, that is five stacks of dying light that we are dealing with right now so survivors of 15 percent slowdown that ada doing the lord's work on that generator i i gotta say i'm thinking dying light a little bit better here than thanatophobia last game i mean my bit. biggest issue is this so my issue with thanatophobia in comp is that the moment that you kill a survivor you yep. lose out on 12% of your Absolutely. slowdown potential with Natophobia. Like on kills like Plague, on Legion, makes sense because you're going to be spreading the pain. Everyone's going to be injured. But if you're going for an early tunnel out, realistically speaking, unless your tunnel out target is the obsession, then Dying Light is just objectively better. True. 
very, very true. And worth noting, as of right now, I need to do the points a little bit in my head, but I think if the survivors were able to get all their stages out right now, I think it would still result in a tie. But otherwise, I don't think that's going to be the case. This will be a fresh hook coming in on Ada, which will be 12 points base for every survivor being hooked once. Not to mention survivor out of the game, so I think that is going to be well enough points for this nurse to be able to secure victory here. Especially yeah. if more things to go. Exactly. I was about to say, like, the nurse saw us a lot of time here. So, yes, the nurse could kind of just, you know, go around, kick some rocks, and search these lockers for a survivor, as we are going to find the oh, ace. No. Uh, but, I mean, even then, if they were to do all of that and more, they have enough points to secure victory here in set number one. The good news is, though, folks, we still have a set number two on its way, not to mention the rest of this match. Though I am very excited for next set because we have some interesting killers and both of them excited to see we got a huntress and then a singularity on dead dog salute but i say i i genuinely do not remember the last time i saw someone upstairs me coming in a huntress and competitive usually it's like what almost always banned because they don't want to deal with the hitboxes but it actually the last time i think i saw huntress was on dead dog saloon which was like seasons ago yeah, it, it's been a hot minute. We don't see as much Huntress anymore uh, for whatever reason. We've tried to bounce around her to give her a bit more of a fair shake, but nonetheless, uh, they, they, we, haven't, we haven't seen a lot. And mm -hmm. looks like we are going to see second stage there on, uh, I believe, on the Ada. Yep, and yeah. we do see the Zarina's oh. Blood Trail here. So this looking more and more like a 4K and that there will be the down. Just a little bit on the tip there, and they will get that hit. 4K3. And again, so the only true downside, but obviously you lose that one, which isn't great. You can't afford to tie any of the next sets. You have to outright win them because this is a blowout in terms of points. I, I don't know the points off the top of my head, but I'm guessing it's something like a 15, maybe even like 18 point differential here, which is if you tie a set, you're going to have to absolutely do the same thing in another one where you dominate one of these sets which is it's, it's it's a hard ask having to say like hey we need to dominate this next set that doesn't work out very well for you you just need to yeah. win your sets outright. all right everyone welcome back to set number two we got i believe infinity is yeah infinity is once again piloting a killer that is near and dear to my heart as possibly i would say the best range killer i know some people say Deathling is better i don't know huntress is just so good also i have not seen this axe cosmetic up close and it looks wicked yeah, I was just thinking that myself the first time seeing that cosmetic as well. That being said, I imagine these survivors are going to be up close and personal oh, yeah. with this axe very shortly as we do see the Jake now in chase of the Huntress, though they are going to be able to evade getting hit here as they do vault that window. I'll say this area here, not the best place for the Huntress to be chasing, but trying to go for a quick throw there up on main, but uh, just not able to get the right line of sight. But to say, if the survivor had held on for another second or so, I think they would have launched it because they do have that Babushka O-Cap. They are Machine Gun Huntress. However, survivor is doing a really good job staying out of line of sight. They do have a bit of a 3-jet in the back here, but I'm not going to lie with Huntress. Oh, they do find a survivor, though. I, I don't know if Huntress can hold a 3-jet as well as the killers back here because there's 110. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing about Huntress being a 110 killer. And why I almost sometimes do say that 110 killers need to be pushed up to 115 is because Please. it's just going to be really, really rough around these eye tiles here as they're going to have to force them either to get the hit in between that gap right there or just to eat the pallet and then move forward. Okay, I hate to burst your bubble kill, but as a trickster main, I know for a fact that these tiles on Dead Dog are not the collision that you expect, and you will hit a you'll hit mid air over nothing. And my goodness, this Kate is looping this rock like it's nobody's. This is a shack for this Kate. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and she gets the stun as well. Also, want to uh, say welcome, welcome Raiders from Ots Darva. Thank you much for the raid, Ots. We appreciate over here on COTF. Ots has been here before as a co-caster with me and others. So thank you much for the support and hopefully y'all can enjoy our second set with Misery versus Infinity here on Dead Dog Saloon. We're going to see some Huntress gameplay right now, followed by some Singularity thereafter. I was about to say, we haven't seen a gen pop yet. Corrupt has completely expired, and they've only taken one injury. 
if we don't see some gens popping up soon, I'm really wondering what the survivors are doing. Do you think they've been trying to break into the three gen? And oh my, this is such oh, tight looping, and they do get the hit on the cake. There's the first gen going down. I think they broke the three gen. Yeah, no, they have broken the three gen. Jake gonna be bringing him over towards the side. A lucky break as well. Gonna make it harder for the Huntress to follow this survivor in chase. The Huntress doing a great job. Will get the M1 oh. down. Yeah, really good job there. And finally, I, I, I don't mean that negatively, but for this yeah. for this Huntress, as a killer man myself, I've been feeling the pressure like, Huntress, you yeah. gotta get that basement hook. And there she is. There's that glorious basement hook. And it'll be first hook coming in. Two gens already popping. And I do believe they broke the three gen. And, okay, so usually you don't want the saloon gen to go first, but considering Huntress can kind of like harass it, I think it's a good idea to break it here. I think they did a good job there. Yeah, no, I would say so. I mean, all things considered, the Huntress has been doing the best that they can do with the resources available to them. The question is whether or not they're going to be able to capitalize off this basement hook now. Survivor is going to be able to go in there, but it's going to be guaranteed one for one trade, if not oh, yeah. a two for one, as uh, this Huntress with Okap and Babushka is going to be able to really protect that. Oh, look, that being said, Kate here is going to be harassing the Huntress. The biggest thing that the virus can do right now is trying to reduce the number of hatches that the Huntress yep. has at their disposal before going for the Zunhook. But to say, you probably want to make sure that you have at least four so that way you can double tap the survivor that has the BT or double tap the survivor that it is doing the unhooking, which is the best case scenario here. But yeah, not wanting to expend any other time. That will be second stage secured. However, that is three survivors, uh, you know, two and a half if you count Kate being harassed on generators this whole time. And I don't think there's any... Oh, there is somebody back here. Where did, how did she see this Renato? I didn't see anything. The, the game ah! sends off the charts, but once again, oh, this yeah. tile here is just going to be absolutely horrid to work around. I'm just trying to get that snapshot, but unable to get the hit. And we will want to note that these survivors are now able to get two generators. Oh, no, no one going for the unhook, though. And not doubling back either. And Renato, oh. go. I think they're going to go for the unhook. They're going to go for the trade here. Yeah. Yeah, but However, he does not do have the this? time if... Yeah, I don't think he does. I don't think he do if Bakush goes half. They do. Wow, oh, they that's actually interesting. do. So and that's there's only one hatchet. Well, so I think that's a new interaction. So think about that for a second. Previously, with Babushka Oak half point blank a Huntress hatchet at that hook, what would happen is they would get the grab. The grab! But the grab's no longer there, so they can actually one for one trade in basement now. Wow. I didn't even think about that. You're right. Yeah, because the OCAFT is the... Does that mean you have to have double cooldowns in yeah. order to get the... You yeah. know, to stop the unhook now? That's yeah. crazy. I never thought about that. Honestly, it's the first time that we've seen it in this scenario since that update. So I was thinking like, oh yeah, it's just going to be... It's going to be not even a one-for-one -one trade. But these survivors obviously having practice against the Huntress in this scenario knew full well that they could go for the unhook without any issue. Absolutely. There's the deal on the Jake as well. I imagine they're going to be tucked nice and neatly into a corner gen. And unless I'm wrong, yeah, there's like the water tower gen is close, but it's this no three gen. Like if you're a blight, sure, but not as a huntress here, even with a little bit of line of sight. And man, you're not kidding. The game sense on this huntress is insane. The places they're finding survivors is just crazy. And a double tap to boot. That, and there was the perfect lob right there. They knew full well that the hitbox behind survivors lags behind them. That's something for you survivor mm -hmm. mates to know is that when going against a Huntress, if you ever go, that was such an unfair hit, so on and so forth, the your hitbox while running lags behind you and good Huntresses know that and will abuse that time and time again as we saw just there. Absolutely, they get the unhook. After second stage is acquired though on the Renato. Also, Kate in a hold. Oh my goodness, beautiful double back, but they're gonna go down here regardless, forcing the pick. Are they gonna have time to get this uh, unhook, or are they gonna drop? I think you drop here. No, they're gonna go for the hook. They want the points. Yeah, it makes sense here. Not to mention the points, but I also want to point out something that we didn't mention earlier in all the chaos. That's a Scourge Choke Pain Resonance Regressive oh, Progress Gen no. by 25%. They've actually been two hooks on Scourge Chokes, by the way. So that is 50% off the most Progress Gen. The Huntress here, I imagine, is going to be going for Progress Chokes on anyone who has not been or hooked on a Scourge Choke yet. And we'll just try and regress the most Progress Gen as we see these three Gens. Not a three gen, but with the Huntress's range, it will definitely be a lot easier for them to manage. 
But I say, is that the strat? Are we about to see the comeback of the sentry via Scourge hooks? Oh, no! Like, using basement. Oh, and they predicted the double back is two. Renato's death hook. They need to get to a safety pallet. Are they going to... You don't drop this, right? You never drop this pallet. Yeah, you, you never drop it. You, you wait until they bloodlust three you down. Oh! Or swing through the pallet like an absolute psycho. <laughs> and that will be death hook for Renato. They get the unhook. But like you said, these have been pain resonances for a little bit now. And I don't think Renato's given a pain resonance either. That, however, is not a pain resonance, just a death hook. But like you said, that's been 50% off of a generator so far. Chucking stuff over. Okay, yeah, I better say there's no way they're they're not resetting. Yeah, that that would make the most sense here. That being said, I want to notice something or note something. Normally on hunches, especially with basement in the middle, we see agitation and even more so with Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. We don't know what this fourth perk is. It's not agitation. They're not speedy on their feet with a uh, survivor on their shoulder. True. So I'm still not sure what this last one is. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, as I imagine more and more, that's going to be an endgame perk. Whether it be a Noed, a uh, No Way Out, we'll have to see. But to say, if if if, uh, if I was taking bets, you're also seeing another survivor in the distance. This this Huntress is just like so keen eyed. Um, I would guess no way out. I would, as, as again, as a 110 killer, I don't really feel like no way it's where you want to be. Unless, like, maybe Slinger. Slinger might be the only exception to that rule. And Jake taking it over the pallet. This survivor's also dead. This, is this Huntress actually about to come back in, in this game after such a rough start? I mean, it's starting to look like it more and more. They've done a fantastic job bringing this back. And once again, that lagging hitbox behind the survivor. Hundreds know exactly where to place the hatchet. And looks like they're going to bring him not to basement. Maybe a They haven't been pain here. rest. Yeah, this is uh, this is the only survivor that hasn't been pain rest yet. And will they get this pain rest for the final gen pops? Yeah, it looks like they will. Both of are screaming. Checking the water tower. We do know that nobody else was on the gens. I imagine they're going to have to split up here. Is this going to turn into a 4K? I thought this was going to be like a three out. I mean, at the very least, if this is an end game perk, regardless of it being no it or no way out, it's looking like it's going to be a 3K. And yeah, no, I was fully expecting this to be a four man out in some capacity. Obviously, there's going to be some hooks, especially the basement hook that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. But this is turned around and Huntress checking every nook and cranny and for good reason as this survivor being very gutsy here. Very sneaky Zarina. They actually blended really well with that bush, especially in that shadow corner, but now doing the best you can with Machine Gun Huntress going through the vault. Oh no, taking a double hit through the window, and that is gonna be second hook coming in for Zarina. Can you even finish a generator here? I don't, think I don't you can. know. It's looking more and more like the survivors are going to get 4K at four gens completed. Also, want to point out that we actually only know two perks. We have the fourth perk that has not been revealed, but at this point, as we have not seen it, I'm going to reveal that this Huntress does in fact have Bamboozle. They have not vaulted a single window. It makes sense. They didn't ever take chases in the main building, and even Shaq never really got to that point. I'm honestly surprised they didn't take brutal strength i know that sounds weird but there's so many just you know breakable doors and line of sights and everything you want to open up on this map i'm surprised they didn't take brutal strength i'm uh i wish we had some like you know post-game interview at this point to be like what was your thought process behind this i'm i'm very curious well, it's always interesting, especially with killers that we don't see often. Huntress being one of them, which is always a shame. I want to see more Huntress gameplay, but we do not see Huntress a lot anymore. And so the meta really hasn't settled on what is used on Huntress, what is not. And I'm actually True. really curious to see if we do see um, it moved away from Babushka and two double, uh, double oak half or double cooldown instead for that basement scenario that we saw earlier. It's a very good chance. I did not realize that was the way it goes, but it looks like the hatch will be closed here. And I I don't know what this survivor can do. I think the exit gates are oh they are very split actually. They They're are. Very split. But uh, that being said, I'm not sure it is going to matter because Huntress has a decent line of sight from the shack on there, and we see oh, no, no way out. I'm about to say, can you even get out of like so? Can you stealth this at all? So the Huntress was a little bit further away. No, you <laughs> are you are bright as a Christmas Huntress. tree. Not from this eagle eye Huntress who has seen every single survivor in every single scenario so far. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is going to be the fake at the pallet. K doing a great job, but Huntress trying to go for the sneaky shot there, and this is going to be the 4K confirmed. But I say a 4K one from what I thought was going to be a three man out. 
That was such an interesting strat from the Hunters, going for a basement, trying to get the pressure early on, and then when it was one gen left, just absolutely slamming Scourge Hooks to slow whatever progress the survivors had to nothing. And the survivors just never recovered from that. That is... That was a really good Hunters play. I am surprised that went down the way it is. They did absolutely clutch it. They kept their head level the entire time. Yeah, honestly, really well played, really great comeback. But that being said, we are going to be getting set up for trial number four here in just a few moments. So that in mind, we do want to remind everyone here today that you, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors. All right, welcome back, everyone, with 10 times more energy brought to you by Rogan. Ah, they got the slipstream out on, so everyone starts out nice and slipstreamed. And I do believe that also means it takes 30 extra seconds to spawn a uh, EMP, correct? Yep, that is correct. It, this is one of those eerie add-ons that, like, we were warned should be banned. We said, we don't have enough data yet, and we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it's a lot oh, of early game pressure at the end of the day when it does go your way. But when it doesn't, and the survivors just kind of you know chill and wait and allow you to set up it kind of gets a bit interesting of whether or not it does provide enough value because it kind of is like the verse bear traps on pig right where mm -hmm. if you start with all the reverse bear traps but you don't complete gens it just kind of wastes the beginning of the match but it comes down to if you find a survivor which to be fair the singularity does now i would say with the way they were using it so you can you can see people through the bushes with the singularity file pods and so you can actually slipstream to them early on if you caught them. I actually really like that play, and worth noting, that is a sloppy butcher, and my goodness, this is an intense chase. This is why I love this killer. This killer is so cool. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really unique to see Singularity in general. We do see Ace may have been EMP'd earlier, ah! but going to get reapplied to that slipstream by body blocking for the Renato. However, Ace is going to be getting a little bit of distance away, but looks like Singularity wanting to slug out here. Ah! It looks like it is the case. Good pressure regardless. Worth noting, too, where are they getting the speed from? What add-on is that? So that's oh Soma goodness. Family Photo, which gives you the haste aspect off the slipstream. Okay, okay. That's what I was curious. I, I thought the, uh, the... Okay, never mind. But, oh, a little bit of a misclick there. But they do get the hit through the pallet. Really good pressure. They do reset and pick up the, uh, the Renato, but first up coming in... Honestly, a lot of really good pressure from that opening sequence, and that was an early time to end Corrupt as well. Yeah, honestly, not bad overall, and whatever progress they may have had on Jen just got regressed by 25% with Scourge Rook Bane Resonance on top of which. Indeed. So now the question is, was there enough resources wasted on the survivor side to make a comeback here and keep the pressure up, or is this reset going to be kind of a bit damaging? Is Yeah, there's the EMPs coming in. Resetting them as much as possible. This is going to be kind of intense. I really like the use of uh, Singularity so far. They're really good at multitasking here. And they do spy Renato in the back wing. Good information at the very least. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest things, right? It's not always about getting the tag and the slipstream. It's sometimes just about getting that information, able to know exactly where those survivors are going to be. We saw Night Lay play Singularity the other mm -hmm. week and was insane, to say the least. And so I'm excited to see if we see similar gameplay here from Jukebox here from Misery. Absolutely. And there's the Renato coming in for the unhook. I was to say, why are they, uh, I don't know why you uh, try to pick the hook grab, but... A very interesting hit through the pallet, uh, sorry, through the uh, survivor, trying to get a cheeky slipstream. I kind of appreciate that attempt, but first gen going down regardless, which means I guess that this second one might not be as uh, useful. Yeah, probably not, real estate speaking. That's what I've talked about before. Sometimes there is such a thing as too early of a Scourge Hook Pain Resonance because it is not 25% on the gen. You getting 25% off the gen means you're losing value. And so there's there's mm -hmm. a discussion to be had. Do you, do you try and proc Scourge Hook right away or more towards the end? Either way, as we do here, a survivor up here oh, on there was Gallows. The and this might be the final perk here for Singularity. That there is a pop goes the Reasel regressing that gen by 30% up its current progression i say honestly this makes sense you don't bring any end game perks as you know the win condition you don't want to let that fifth generator finish there is the slipstream though from the biopod will they try and go for the chase yeah they will they get it because the emp is not gonna be in time they go for the ball that's gonna be a mid bolt hit oh my goodness we still have uh 
Are they gonna get a second stage? No, they're gonna get unhooked just in the nick of time here. And an iframe hit on the Dwight as well, unfortunate. Yeah, and on top of it, we do see the tag there on the Renato. Looks like they're gonna go for the Dalant here, and we are gonna see that fall out the window, but not a lot of distance gain. No pallets mm -hmm. either. This is gonna be a clean down. Yeah, but they didn't secure the second stage, so, like, a lot of time wasted. Now, granted, during that time, the Singularity is doing a lot of harassing on the generators, getting pop off when they needed to, but that, we'll have to see. Second hook coming in as they do finish second generator. Checking their lines again. I don't know what the... Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not sure how the Singularity clutches this. They had a really good start, but still, there's a lot of pressure on these survivors. Yeah, I mean, there's, mm. there's a lot of back and forth, and this is what I kind of love about this killer, and we're seeing them get a lot of tags to prime the mm. slip things coming up. We see them actually going to be able to tag Ooh. the Jake here, and with that haste, that's like, I think they do, ooh. It's a, kind of a close one there. They do not get the hit there at the window, but they do box the Jake out from getting the hook trade. <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, no, now you can go for it. So it will be hook trade is, Jake has been hooked, correct? I do believe so. That being said, looks like they're going to tag them out again. I want to say really good job by the Singularity, knowing the timing of when you can do that, because the Singularity does have some built-in anti-camp, anti-tunnel uh, features, more or less, mm -hmm. to where it does get slowed down quite significantly. But knowing that timing and being on point, they're able to get that down, and this will be Renato sent back to the campfire via the entity. But they did finish the third gen during that time, during the hook trade, and so now it's one gen left before it ends. Looking around, trying to see what generous. I, I hate that if a survivor's death hook, you still have that moment where you have to get back up. That's very frustrating, but that honestly, it's my only complaint with Singularity. After that, I think this kill is super fun and well designed. I love this. Yeah. I uh, was 10 to 3. That being said, survivors need to complete just two more generators. If Infinity is able to secure these last two gens, they are going to walk away victorious here in mm -hmm. set number two and the match overall. Otherwise, if they are not able to complete that last generator, we're going to a set number three. Indeed. And it looks like they will take the chase with the ace here. That means that Dwight's the only one on a generator. Worth noting, they're all injured, so there is a snowball potential here, potentially. Well, not to mention with Sloppy Butcher slowing things down with the Mangled Saz effect. I mean, it's going to be hard to reset now while also trying to have survivors on gens. But we see the drop down there from the fight, but not knowing oh, where Singularity no. is, will go down. But to say, and this survivor hasn't been hooked yet, so that's going to be a fresh skirt trick. Survivors need to reset. And with the ability of Sing Singularity has line of sight on everything, they might be able to make a comeback here. The question is, can they do it to win the set or tie the set? Because they can't, I'll be honest, they really can't afford to tie the set. They need to win this. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that we need, they need to though. win it handily. We talked about this earlier after set number one, with it being very much in favor of Infinity 40 to 16. Oh, they they get need the to have a similar result. And yeah, that hit even with bounce landing. And we do see the Singularity trying to get the tag here, but that anti-cam functionality gonna be coming into play Ooh. and just not able to get the tag there. But I say this survivor's second hook, I wanna say, because they've oh, already been hooked on a skirt choke. And the question shot. is, how far was that gen progressed back in, uh, that's one o'clock? I mean, it's pretty well progressed. That we was see a skirt the choke. final skirt choke pain resonance. Oh, wow. Another 25%. I'm not sure if that hit uh, the top of main or the gen over here, but uh, looks like Singularity is going to be taking a look around. But first, finding the Dwight, and I think it's going to be an EMD nonetheless. Yep. Uh, renewal on the Jake, I'm assuming, because Delhi's banned, I'm right? You know, honestly, I'd have to double check. Singularity, we haven't seen often enough for me to know of any degree of certainty. So let me double check for you, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm just curious because uh, usually Delhi's only allowed on the S tiers, even uh, when we uh, when Plague got you know their quote unquote nerf. Uh, they only you, you guys only brought Sprint Burst back in. Well, honestly, Sprint Burst has done a number against Plague, but Plague even still putting up numbers. Going after the ace in the corner here, Jake has healed, so that was in fact renewal, not Delhi. It makes the most sense. However, this one are going to the corner. Worth noting, we are still at two gens. Though they yeah. did go corner, so I don't know if they, can you hook here? Is there a hook in place? I think that's gonna be a yeah. real question. Yeah, it looks like there is one close enough, but it's gonna be a little bit of a walk-in. We did confirm Deliverance yeah. is banned against Singularity. Once yeah. again, kind of interesting trying to balance the ground and killer that we don't have a lot of data for, where it's either they're really good or they're gonna need some work. And we're excited to see more Singularity this season. That being said, one gen completed, 
We need just one more for Infinity to walk away victorious. Otherwise, we're going to a set number three, folks. Indeed. And it was the Jake who was a uh, reset. However, I do believe they are death hook. There's the unhook. Probably the Dwight over there as uh, Jake is over here. The question is, can they get the down quick enough or do they have to leave and go for, uh, for an area? Also, it looks like Saloon Jet is completely regressed. Yeah, I do not hear that. Singularity has been 20 meters, so we should have been able to hear that without issue, which means that gen has regressed to nothing. And the way that Singularity works, unless these survivors have some really good tricks up their sleeve, I'm thinking that there's a very good chance this Singularity could hold the tie condition. Just they're so good at holding a 3-gen potentially. Especially that with, means... you know, they can get it out this way. You know, the 3-gen yeah. being so split. It, it's going to be interesting. That being said, Survivor's doing a good job body blocking using the MP there to try and slow things mm -hmm. down, making the chase just a little bit slower. However, I mean, I'm going to say it now. Some of family photo there is coming in clutch in these chases. True. But we see two Survivor's up there on Saloon. They do not seem to care about the fact that they have been tagged up there. And we're going to see the pallet stun and the down. The built-in Spirit Fury on Singular is such an interesting thing. Indeed. I'm surprised they're going for this hook. They must have the timer in their head based on how many pistons they saw that they should have time. But they use... Oh, but they don't have enough pistons done. That second step... Oh my goodness, they actually might be able to clutch this. And granted, it's still a tie, which is not what you want, but it's still better than losing outright. Correct. And at the end of the day, that's going to mean that Misery is going to have to have a handed victory in set mm. number three. If, in instance, this does continue to be a tie, we're going to see possibly people come into play here, 30% off that gen's progression. But we'll have to wait and see what this next chase looks like. And if it is Ooh, with like the white, it's going to be really difficult for these survivors because they are tagged. They need an EMP now. But if they go into chase with the Jake, the Jake might be able to hold it for long enough. That's a fair point. I also, again, I really like that placement on the cactus back there. If the survivor decides to hide back there after uh, Singularity, you know, getting ahead on them, they can potentially jump into chase. But now I think you need to go back, set up, make sure you have your uh, sights open on these generators with your pods and really well play the Singularity there. I, I'm surprised they didn't use pop earlier on the gen that did end up finishing. We'll have to see if, the, okay, does that cactus pay off? I want to know. No, they don't care. They're going to... Oh, they run inside before they're able to get a chance. Well played to the Jake. And we well see played. the MP on the Jake as well. Uh, looks like they're going to reapply. But the question now is, where's the Dwight? That's a very good question. Actually, I think the Dwight was there. I think they tagged the Dwight there. No, they're I both, they're that both slipstream. The, no, so Dwight has been for quite some time. We haven't oh, okay. seen it for a hot minute. But uh, Jake EMP'd earlier. A balance line going to get them a little bit of distance. But yeah, the question is right now, where is the Dwight? We're going to see the slip here on the Jake. They're not going to gain a lot of distance and they don't have a lot available, even with the bounce blade. They're going to try and extend things. But the Dwight just needs to complete this last generator. Yep. Oh, and, scratch marks. Oh, there's scratch marks. Okay, so they are in the back of the map. Worth noting, though, that's a really awkward spot to, you know, go down. And that is definitely like, they're not getting picked up. Like, Dwight has to go for pickup and you can't pick up from in there. You just die. Yeah. So really odd place to go and they do get it through the center it looks like unless there's some freaky scenario where someone bleeds out we're going to a game three i'm sorry set three yes so you'd be correct if there is a bleed out though true that will be victory for infinity so <laughs> that they they need to find where the where the jake is and they have about a minute maybe a minute 15 left to do it Oh yeah, they they bled out. Uh, they were bleeding a lot earlier, but the, again, they went up. Oh. They went up into the room, so there's no. Oh, like, that's they, right. They yeah, there's anywhere. no way out of the room. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like it, it's it's the it's the special room. It's the room yeah. where everybody goes to die. Yeah. But funny oh, enough, going way. into the room to extend time actually may have hurt them more than helped them. True. Considering how much they had already bled out, that's a really good point. But regardless, again. I thought for a second they could have possibly done a 4K2 and pulled the miracle out, but again, that that one o'clock gen just didn't really have any way to, you know, have a biopod on it. But honestly, 4K1 on Singularity on Dead Dog, I'm happy. Like I I I take that every day as a killer. This killer did phenomenally. All right, everyone, welcome back to set number three. It is in fact an artist mirror to end things off and not gonna sugarcoat it folks misery's got an uphill battle they have to win this set 
decisively in order to claim victory, whereas Infinity set themselves up pretty well with a set number one and really only need to do a couple of objectives to win here. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, right? They, they are in a prime position to claim victory here on the Suffocation Pit. I'll have to wait and see, though. The biggest thing that we always want to emphasize is the game's not over until the Entity sings. So we'll have to wait and see how lethal this artist is as we see the Ace now in chase. I imagine priming a balanced landing as there'd be no other reason as we see two pros there at the flight path boxing out the Ace, but Ace gonna get a little bit of distance. Mm. Not enough though to avoid the hit. Better say, they will take an M1 here. And Guilt, now that you mention it, I have to know, what does it sound like when the Entity sings? Uh, the sound of the Entity singing is four survivors dying simultaneously in basement. That sounds like beautiful music to my ears, and I hope that we hear it. We do, they got, not only got the down, but they also got a crow on another survivor, which means that survivor needs to go to the locker. It looks like that is the case. First hook coming in at the end of the corrupt. I think it corrupt was uh, about a minute, minute and a half into it, so they got their value from it. And now the question is, can they keep a snowball? This is not. This is a good start, but it's they've got a lot of work to do. Yes, they do. That being said, send in some Dire Crows to get a little bit of information. No Killer Instincts, no Dire Crows landing on these survivors. That being said, it looks like ours wanting to pressure this unhook and it's going to be kind of sticking around and still no information. Mm -hmm. There has to be a survivor somewhere on these gens, so these survivors being very keenly aware of the aura as we see, uh, I'm not sure if the artist did, but as we see yeah, a Dwight boy. crouching. <laughs> I think they did. Yeah, they walked back inside. I think they are well aware. And I think that's why it even knew. It was like, oh, they totally see Yeah, yeah they there, there's the no well. way they did it. Looks like ours is going to try and set up for the double tap here. Dwight seeing that too is going to avoid it though. Going to get body blocked here. I think they get past in time and there will be the one for one trade. And it's in time that the crows expire, so they're not going to be able to follow it up. There is the first generator. The question is, do we see a second one? Is obviously a deadlock not allowed since that was a pain resonance uh, right off the bat. Yes, indeed. Do you want to note that Savar is arguably aware of a merciless storm in play as well? So they are hitting those very difficult skill checks as they will get the hit there with the dire crows. Uh -oh. and that is going to be a down here on the J. And they don't force the pick either. They're going for the slug. They are going to go for the pick after all. Interesting. However, yeah. now with the survivor in the back that yeah. slugged, I don't think they're going to be able to pick it. Oh my goodness, there's scratch marks already mm. rotating over these survivors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you expect? It's Infinity yeah. Survivor Team. They are so good. Yeah, and no, they've been doing a fantastic job. Two gens already completed on top of which. I mean, if they were able to get the survivor back here on the hook before they were able to pick up the slug, that would have been huge for yeah, uh, the killer here. The survivor is realizing that will get the pickup and looks like they're getting the reset too. Interesting. Where are they resetting? I'm guessing that might be a med kit potentially as we uh, we know at least one server is, and I'm guessing the other one's on the other side of the map here. Worth noting, I don't think the killer can let too many more gens occur before, uh, oh man, that was so well done by the Renato. It, However, oh. just the unhook. Yeah, there's the unhook. It looks like that's an injured survivor as well. Dwight coming in out of nowhere, but Jake gonna be able to wait out the BT. I think they get here to the pallet. Jake going as far to take the hit from the Dire Crows. Dwight gonna try and get to the window. Wilson ah! fake it out. Oh. oh, good fake. Not gonna work out in the end. That will be another hook coming in. It is worth noting, I think they're at least getting their uh, their Scourge hook uh, points in, but I don't I don't know if it's going to be enough. I'm, it's like, again, every time they have something good go for them, I'm just like, but survivors are doing this. Like, I won't have to do this. Like, this is such an uphill battle still. So oh, Good call. Hey, fantastic call. Fantastic game sense here from Ducky. But I want to point out something really freaking funny about Scourge hook and Merciless Storm being used in tandem. Because if a Merciless Storm procs, and on that most progressed gen, you also hit Scourge Hook Pain Residence and regress by 25%. Merciless Storm does not stop. You continue hitting those skill checks until you either let go or you complete that oh, jet. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, because you no longer uh, scream oh, anymore, yeah. right? Well, you scream, but it doesn't make you let go, right? Right. Yeah. No, wait, uh... it still does. It's been I a hot minute since that. I've seen Merciless Storm, so I'm sitting here thinking, does it make you let go? I think it does because 
DMS Scourge Hook is still banned for that reason. But never mind. Exactly. Ignore that. But I think other perks that don't make you scream do. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that's a thing. Ooh, wait. Okay, I, th I thought there was two crows that got hit. No, so just Renato in the back here. It is worth noting this artist is playing like again really, really well. If this was any other scenario that was you know somewhat more attainable, they'd be in a really good spot. But just such a tough spot to be in. It. Last mind value. My goodness. Yeah, and I do want to point out there that that is in fact a pop goes the weasel regressing the most progressed gen by or regressing that gen's progression by 3% of its current progression. It's always such a strange thing to like try and explain how pop works now because True. it's not the same as any other regression perk. That's a very good point. Yeah, it works really, really weird now. And survivors have plenty of resources not going for the swing and try trying to set up a crow and it doesn't work out for them. Good fake. That might have even been a bit of an auto aim. Oh, another good fake. This survivor's doing so well. Now with that Hilton. It's going to be very. Oh my goodness. But they left in time. These survivors' call outs are insane. Usually that hits. Yeah, honestly, they've been doing a fantastic job calling out when the, when the artist is breaking chase or where they're going to go next. We do see Ace trying to get rid of the Dire Crows here, and they will successfully do so, but go into the corner of the map with no pallets in sight. Yeah, but they're not going to be cornered in the map, though. They're running back into main. Crows do expire. Coming back online. I guess the question is, is like uh, the, the artist's idea is, oh, but they lose the gen in the back here. No three gen left. Yeah, that is going to put a damper on things to say the least. And looks like Ace just going to try and keep the ball rolling. We see the Renato coming in for the body block as well and taking Ooh, the hit. I'm not sure if the artist realized who they're hitting, but that will be the Renato fourth oh, gen popping off here as well. And looks like Renato will end up going down. That they will. Is there any kind of gen switch this boy can hold on to? Going back to the other one. I think we might be looking at five gens completed, folks. This is really tough to hold on to. I don't know what yes. you can do. It's going to be difficult. I mean, it's very it's very possible that we see Misery walk away at the 4K here in the instance that there are no more gens of any progress. Mind you, still one more Skirtshug Pain Resonance in play. It has mm -hmm. now just been used on the Renato. It looks like it did hit this gen here on the hill. It's crazy to think that Renato's been through so much this game, and yet they're still, this is their first hook coming in. They've been battered pretty wildly by this artist, and we did see the reset uh, finish, and Jake getting a uh, reset as well. So now Survivor is in a really good spot. They've all reset. Artists can pressure these gens a little bit. We see them coming in for the unhook, but again, just even if you 4K1 here, your Survivor squad has to get a four man out. Yeah, that is very true. And do you want to point out these two survivors are just harassing the hook? Artists wanting to get this second stage. And mind you, we technically don't need two survivors here. I think they're thinking just in case they take a hit from the Dire Crow in the flight path. But mm -hmm. uh, looks like Jake going to be separating, actually going to the gen. We see the Dire Crow being sent out here and will get the hit on the Jake. Mind you, there's only one survivor there, which means the survivor's somewhere else. We saw a survivor right. here earlier, but no longer. As they, they, I think they were in the corner, and look, there's a balance landing. They get the hit. Second stage secured, but they need to fire those crows off into the corner. There's the unhook. I don't think it hit the corner. I can't tell. It yeah, there was somebody not. back here. Yeah, that is the Dwight there. Going to be running behind main, trying to get a little bit of distance. They give their team a little bit of time to reset. You see the Dark Rope coming out, and Artist going to try and block Dwight off. But Dwight going to be able to get to the next pallet here but not going to drop it, just going to keep those resources up. That way they have a little bit more safety back there in that three gem. About to say, they played this just so, so safely. And another reset coming in on the Renato. Renato, I'm about to say, if they could have interrupted the heal on Renato, that would have been ideal for them, but not able to. And now Dwight would be the only one injured running back. Yeah, I mean, you can you can get these gems regressing at the very least. Take your tags, but survivors are going to go reset, and they're going to reset faster than your gems regress. Yeah, well, that that's the biggest thing. They're going to reset faster. You Now you're only going to be getting 2.5% off the gen with a dry kick, plus the 0.3% per second. Now, mind you, Mercer's Storm has not been procced on any of these gens. So at the very least, at the very least, we're going to see Mercer's Storm proc and get blocked by the entity. 
I would imagine if somehow the survivors were able to avoid that happening, especially against an artist, I'd be very surprised. Oh, but that is Renato here. And if they take a hit through here and run into the area, they could be looking at some trouble. Oh my goodness, they threaded the needle on those crows. That would have been lights out for them. That would, they yeah, would it would have been. Looks like a 7% uh, skill check there. Jumping on the gen immediately off and getting hit by 10% regression. A bit unfortunate for the survivors to say the least. That being said, an another 7%. That is now 20% off of that gen. And it sounds like another miss skill check here on this gen as well. So that's 30% across those three miss skill checks. That must be heartbreaking for these survivors. Indeed. But again, the survivors still just in such a commanding position. Renato... Like, they've had so many attempts to get Renato down, and there's three survivors over here. Yeah, Look at they, him go. They want to not only complete this gem, but they want to avoid that Mercy Storm, so they're trying to get through it that way. Mm -hmm. We do see the Crows kind of switch hands here with the severed hand, but missing the hit there on the Dwight. Indeed, and just even with Artis having a really good start in the pressure, it's kind of starting. And again, we've seen this before, is where a killer... It looks like they got, you know, kind of crushed, but it's not the case. They came in with a really rough expectation for the game, and they have to play accordingly. Like, like this this killer can't play methodically in traditional comp style. They have to play really risky and try and force some mistakes on the survivor part, and it's just so difficult. Yeah, I think at this point, what they're just trying to do is just try and find an op opportunity for a down, maybe a slug, potentially a two for one. But with that gen being so far back, we're gonna see Merciless Storm come Merciless. out yeah, they left early because their team saw what the artist was setting up and they're going mm -hmm. for that two for one hit. Just really good call outs from the Survivor Squad. They've, again, it can't be understated. They have played so precisely this game. Even when the artist had a good start, artists technically used most of their resources early on with those early hooks, the, uh, the time they had from the first couple gens popping. And yeah, they're just gonna have to commit to this Jake, but I think they understand that the win condition here is just not very feasible and just trying to get as many points as possible and hope, you know, maybe that your survivor squad can be, do an even better job. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that that is the, the question of the day. But even then, like we mentioned, the, the result here is based on the tie in set two, they need to get 25 points over Infinity as we mm -hmm. do see this last gen get completed. And with four survivors still in the match, I mean, it's at least the three man out here. Right. We, don't, we know that there's no real end game perks to be had here as we uh, effectively know the build. And Jake going back to the corner, I think with Jake going back here, it is going to solidify. Yeah, that'll be a three man out. The question is, have they hooked uh, at least every survivor once, right? Hey, hold on one second. It might not be just the three man out, folks. This might be a hatch escape if they play it right. Uh, they're going to play some really spicy gameplay to get a, a hatch escape here. Yeah, I'm about to say, they go down to the crows and survivor coming in possibly for a flashlight save, but it's not going to work out here. Oh, oh, fire. no, I was about to say, no shot. You still have charges in that toolbox. Actually, a question. Are you allowed to sabo with the yeah. toolbox? 1000%. We, we have, I have never I seen think, that happen. We, Why we has no one never sabo? seen it because like nine times out of 10, it's going to be much more beneficial for you to just dump it into a gen. But like, it's an option. We just never have seen it used. Uh, Speaking of getting used, uh, this ace in a really bad spot, taking some aggro from the flashlight, but I don't think they get to the balance landing point. There's the hit tip coming in from Renato. They take a hit through it. Dwight coming in for body blocks as well. I think they have enough time to get another hit here. They they do, but I don't think they have enough time to actually get a hit. Dwight messed up. They yeah, actually they they doubled back into the crows, and that's going to be a 2K here for the artist. But Nine unfortunately, stage. yeah, I, do, I still don't think it's enough. I still don't think it's enough for them to have a reasonable way towards victory. Well, okay, reasonable, no, but to be fair, going into this set, the, the, the win condition wasn't very reasonable, to be honest. True, true. The survivors here, they could still play a really, so again, folks, this is where it comes into the other side of the story. So this artist build and playstyle was absolutely designed to prevent the gens from finishing. And granted, that's a tough call and it didn't end up working out. This next killer, I can guarantee what they're gonna bring. It's gonna be like no wed, camp someone to death, and you, that's how you secure the victory. They only need to get one kill here. Yeah. All right, everyone, welcome back to the final trial of the day. Fear not, though, we have more games tomorrow, Sunday, starting up, but I do believe 12 p.m. CST, or is it 2 p.m.? I forget which time. 
I believe we have one tomorrow at 12 p.m. CSD. I'll be there hosting that, so I'm excited for that. Hopefully y'all are too. Ooh. But that being said, a early hit on the Dark Rose and a locker play as well. I'm actually surprised. Now that I think about it, last trial, we didn't see a lot of survivors jumping into lockers to get rid of the Dire Crows, did we? Uh, to be fair, the, where the game was being played, there was only one spot that had a, access to a locker, and it wasn't very accessible. So, yeah, we, we really didn't, though. And worth noting, we, t we didn't talk about it much, but uh, as we s said a little bit last time, the win condition here for the survivors is abysmal. You can't let them get more than two stages on you. If you get two stages, it's... Hey, you love to see it. Head on firecracker play. Let's go. Getting some value and giving this hate a lot of distance. Yeah, honestly, that was a huge play there for the survivors, to say the least. That being said, we see the Renato still around, trying to go for the body block, but the Dire Crows will get the down as the Kate was in the flight path. They were, and this is also a bit of a no man land. First, so coming in, that is a pain resonance, so it looks like the killer does not care for the wind condition. Uh, we were talking about a little bit behind, like, all you need to take is, like, no wit, deadlock, corrupt intervention, and honestly, this killer seems to be playing this, uh, kind of standard. They don't care, but the wind con is, you know, specific, and they can, you know, take the easiest you. They're like, no, nah, we're gonna play this out like we normally would. We're gonna play this out like this was a normal set, and we got an absolute curb stomp. I mean, honestly, I I, I'm all for it. Play it out as you normally would, even though the win condition is within reach right now, just by camping this survivor to next stage. Even if they trade, it means that the killer mm -hmm. is in position for the win condition. We see them blocking off this pathway here, though, as they do see, I believe that's Zarina trying to make their way here to the envelope. Does seem to be the case, and they are harassing multiple survivors across multiple gens here, and... Yeah, even, you, again, it's kind of weird to think about. You kind of have to do the two-man uh, play here in order to get the survivor off hook without being a hook trade. Um, and second stage is about to be secured here. So that second stage, as of right now, I think if the survivor's got a four-man out, it still would not be enough to uh, win the game. And yeah, I, I don't know what you do here. First gen going down, chasing Renato in the back here. This is where most of the last game was played, honestly. Yep, we did see a lot of the game played here on the main side. The Dire Crows actually may have been able to get a hit there if they did launch him fast enough. That being said, mm -hmm. do you want to note these survivors are keenly aware of Merciless Storm being in play? You know, I respect it. Going for a little bit maybe of a, of a mirror match here. Ooh, Cheeky Crow set it from the opposite side up to see if it pays off, but Renato's not having any, but it's going to leave that loose entirely going around the side and choosing the opposite of main build. However, I, mm, this could be a bit of a nasty spot here. So yeah, they're going to be zoned away. And the crows are gone, though. Oh, man, absolutely well played. This is a, a really good job with this loop. I, this is more than I thought you could do. And that right there, I want to say is the right move. A lot of times you see an artist want to get the down with the dire crows and miss the opportunity for a hit. The best thing you can do there as the artist is actually to just take the M1 and not yep. even fire off the dire crows because the survivors have to make the conscious choice of going into the flight path versus you just m one the survivor down. Absolutely. And with that said, that hook will most definitely secure the victory here. And now survivors are left to play for nothing but the pride. And honestly, I'm, I'm into it. They, again, the first set with the nurse being really unfortunate, not going the way they wanted. And Pop goes with this. Is, this is literally the same build. This is literally verbatim. Yeah, but. and so I'm seeing a little bit of confusion in chat talking about the win condition real quick. So I want to break it down for you. So in order to win a game here in Champs of the Fog, you need to have two wins throughout the sets. So two set wins, that will yield you the win overall. Now we saw Infinity walk away in set one victorious handily with 42-16 in their favor. Set two, however, was a tie, I believe 32-32, which yeah. means that in the instance Misery here wins in set three, we'll be going to the tiebreaker, which is overall match points. What right. that means here is that in order for Misery to win, they need to make up that 24 point deficit plus one that they were that they had in set number one so even if misery were to win right now we're going to the next tiebreaker which will end up going to infinity and because of those two hook stages plus that third at this point in time even if misery wins set three and ties it to one win to one win the final tiebreaker going to match points will be in infinity's favor 
I like to think of it as uh, the, the, the tied match, which was set two, is just set three got tied, and the first two sets were the victories for either side, and so it just, you know, put them all together. And, like you said last time, just go for the M1. I yep. gotta hand it to this killer. It's something that, as a killer, especially even myself, I had to train myself out of the mindset of, oh yeah, I want to use my power because it's going to get be a bit more efficient. You don't have as much fatigue time. You have more flexibility to, you know, pick up immediately. But it just makes a lot more sense, especially against survivors who know what they're doing. And that mm -hmm. being said, Pop Goes the Weasel coming in, going to be regressing that gen by 30% of its current progression. Indeed, and it looks like it was Adam that got chased away here. It looks like they probably... Unless they get a really cheeky crow here, should be able to go for the uh, the hook trade. Are they mind gaming this? Is Adam actually they, going to loop this? They they were trying to mind game it to the best of their ability, but Adam seeing what was happening was not going to fall for it. I see Adam not having any of it. They do finish the third generator in the back near. Uh, I would say that'd be around eleven o'clock. And crow's coming out. Oh, jumping into the locker that was going to give the Adam a little bit of a safe break there. Jumping through the long vault and. Survivors have a really good split here. Again, if it wasn't for the win comp being so difficult, Survivors doing a phenomenal job right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. That being said, we do see Crows going out. The artist doing a fantastic job multitasking here, even while in chase and Crows in the distance as well. You're gonna see the M1 hit off here on the Kate. Is Rina also injured, but the Survivors is not resetting, making me think that they have multiple gens ready to pop. That would be the case, I would guess. It's like you said, they have that one over here by Shaq's side. They had the one in the middle, and yeah, there's the one on Shaq's side popping. I imagine Adam on the other one. Honestly, this this Superbar team is phenomenal here. Oh, but that is gonna be death hook for the game. They do finish the last generator though, and they even dodge the last crows as well. Again, just ah, hats off to this this survivor. But again. Had it not been for a really rough win condition, they would have put, they would actually put some pressure in. That might have been a really close game. Oh yeah, one thousand percent. Artist going to go for the pickup, not able to come in for the pallet stun in time. That will be Kate put up on the hook. I imagine these X gates are already ninety nine, and we're going to see a three man out here. I would, uh, I would have to agree. As, yeah, there's the crows. Oh, everybody getting crowed up. I think they're going to go for the shotgun blast. Oh no, they're just going to take their leave of absence. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a fake out there and that will